Welcome to the Mike and Doug Show. I'm Doug. Hi, Mike. Hello, Doug. How are you today? I'm thrilled because you answered the question I've had for five years. Really? Yeah. I discovered the evil of ICE Incorporated and the stock market and the commodities exchange and the way that I was all linked. I'm going, okay, this is pure evil, but I can't go any further with it. But you, through your research, uh, looking into Michael Farmer and some incredible connections to Enron and going... Douglas, to, uh, you need to show more respect. It's Lord Michael Farmer. Lord Baron Michael Farmer, as a matter of fact, and his... Uh, <laughs> Lord Baron. <laughs> <laughs> and his Baronetus, Candace Owens. The Baronetus will soon be the vice presidential candidate. Uh, she's anyway, making the rounds last night. She was on uh, Tucker Carlson. If she sneezes, it gets on national news. Okay. Yeah. So that's British. It all has to get British approved. As we know, all the news has to be approved out of basically the city of London. For years, you know, I've told you about the book, John Coleman's book, the Committee of 300, right? And I said, I'm going to send it to you because, you know, it's really, there's nothing in there. It's speculation, but it sounds right. It sounds correct that the city of London rules the global economy and that they're all connected to this magical club called the Club of the Isles, which is really Charles. Now, King Charles is the head of the Club of the Isles, and it's got the black monarchy, nobility of Europe, and as well as the existing 12 monarchs of European countries, and they all get together. And they go, can, I, can, can, can I stop you there, Douglas? Because mm -hmm. I've heard you talk about this Club of the Isles forever. Yep. If you got 300 people in a theater and you started talking, what's the first problem you have? It'll never work. Is the first <laughs> It'll problem. never work. <laughs> That's 300 people all uh -huh. talking at once. And so, therefore, you've got to break that down. And when you break it down, you're going to form some kind of hierarchy where there's going to be a few people at the top, and then they're going to break it down into smaller groups, and then eventually you'll get to the 300 people. I mean, that's true with any organization. So this notion that there's 300 people that run the world is stupid. It's basically what you've discovered. Usually it's you know, three, four hundred different corporations that are all interlocked that happen to have convenient people who are on all of them and happen to be members of the Privy Council and, oh, happen to be also connected to the manipulation of gold and happen to be Rothschild agents. So the conspiracy is, oh, it's just those old Rothschild people. And then people get bored with that because there's no facts. There's no statistics. Right. There's no indictable evidence here. Okay. So this is one of the biggest bombshells that the miners, those poor dwarfs that you keep down there just digging day and night, they have come up with my question, who owns ice? Because ice controls the world. And then you looked at her and you're going, no, it's not them. It's not them. No, it's, oh, at one point it was Michael Farmer. But really, Michael Farmer is controlled by another company, which you had to go in here to the SEC. And then you had to go to company house. And then you had to go in here. And then you had to read the bottom line here. And then you had to go over here. And, you, and then finally, you find out exactly who controls and how they control what the globalists want, which is a digital ID that is connected to your bank, that controls your money, knows everything about you because of social media and all the digital information collected in your dark profile, you have now found a mechanism for it. We can frame it in a way that everybody's going to get it if they've done any wiring of funds in the last few years. So the banks have implemented something since 9-11 called Know Your Customer. And that sounds kind of good. And you say the banker is not supposed to send money unless they know who the person is. And they start asking questions. Well, what now is happening is the banks are becoming nosy and intrusive. And it, it is irritating uh, for anybody who's trying to send money to their loved ones, to, to buy something, to sell something. It's the know your customer database that is going to run the social credit score system. We always thought it was going to be Google or Facebook or Instagram or NSA, whatever, to keep all that data in one place. And what we've discovered is that those people are going to be sharing your data with your banker. And I think here is the revelation that our bankers are going to run this social credit score system. And our bankers are going to be the key representative of the Mark of the Beast.